So we're very lucky to have Maxine McHugh at Shearer's Bookshop today to come in and sign some books of her new book, Tales from the Political Trenches. Welcome, Maxine, to Shearer's Bookshop. Well, it's nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, Maxine, I really want to ask you, why did you write this book? Well, I suppose I was keen to examine what's been one of the most extraordinarily dramatic periods in Australian political life, the removal of the first term Prime Minister. And uh, to look at that from the perspective of both uh, an insider, I mean, my time was in politics was um, a brief but very intense, uh, having uh, won uh, the seat of Benelong off of uh, John Howard. But of course before that I spent 30 years as a professional journalist, so I, I had a lot of questions about this period. And I guess as much as anything, I, I brought um, a reporter's eye uh, to, the, to the writing of this book. Uh, so it's been a... A journey of um, exploration and understanding. Uh, like like most writers, I, I write to understand, and um, I hope that um, for the general reader, uh, people will find some answers in this. Who do you think this book? Who do you think will be reading this book? I was determined right from the start that this wasn't just going to be a book for insiders, you know, a small group of people who live and die and are obsessed by politics. Um, I, I'm one of those, I'm a political tragic, you know, I read everything. But uh, I wanted this to be for the person who takes just a moderate level of uh, interest in politics, who might be looking back on the events of the last couple of years saying, what on earth was that about? And we had this big change in 2007, the huge 707 campaign. And, and the defeat of um, an extraordinary political warrior in John Howard, both nationally and in his own seat of Benelong, because he'd held that for 33 years. So that in itself was a very dramatic moment. And of course, with um, Labor, Labor's return to power at the end of 2007, there are immense expectations. And to a certain extent, they were fulfilled. There was the marvellous um, apology to Indigenous Australians, uh, which began the Parliament at the beginning of the 2008 parliamentary year. I think a real, a real high moment, and I think that helped in part um, uh, in a way that it, it addressed the shame of our past with Indigenous Australia. It was wonderful to be in the Parliament that day as a new parliamentarian. Then, of course, I think there was the very deft and timely management of the global financial crisis, and that meant that we've had nothing like the pain and the misery of mass unemployment in the way they have had in North America and in Europe. Uh, but then I think um, a lot of the problems uh, accumulated. But as I argue in the book, nothing that could not have been addressed had people behaved differently. And then, of course, we saw this unprecedented removal of a first-term uh, Prime Minister uh, brought down by, um, I would argue, um, ambitious uh, power brokers. And uh, uh, I brought all that together in a chapter called Ambush. And I think, for, as I say, for the general reader, those people who take a moderate interest in politics, uh, you might be looking back on it and thinking, how, how, how did that happen again? Uh, I think they'll find that I've, I've provided a more complex story um, and a more detailed one than has hitherto been on the public record. So we have many papers and journals in Australia, such as the Monthly and the Quarterly Essay, which often feature political debate. As a broadcaster yourself, do you believe that the written word still has clout regarding political opinion in Australia? Yeah, absolutely. I'm a, um, a great believer in uh, the, the, the written record, the record matters. And, and actually, I think we're, we're seeing now a flowering um, of... Uh, a, a, Good expository writing. I mean, the, the long form essay. I mean, the um, you know the uh, uh, whether it's in the monthly or the quarterly essays or longer longer writing online. There's actually a, a breadth and diversity of platforms now that didn't exist a while back. And for all that the the book trade is a a tight one, a fragile one. Um, you know, we all know that the the tight margins everyone operates on. There's really a, a lot of um, political writing and a lot of writing around um, public issues and that's that's very healthy and, and important and influential. Indeed. We do see a lot of political biography on our shelves these days from former politicians, however your book, Tales from the Political Trenches, is more of a journalistic endeavour concerning, well, almost one political event. Why did you opt for that? Is it purely because of your background? I wanted to tell uh, a wider story, and, and certainly, as I say, I, in, in a very detailed way, I go over the controversial events um, leading up to Rudd's removal in 2010. But I think the broader appeal of this book is that it's about uh, it's about my professional life. Um, it's a, a story of change and risk taking, 
what it's like, uh, as I say, to jump off the cliff, uh, as I did in 2007, and for the parachute to come out. Uh, and that was a spectacular win and a surprising one to most people. Um, and then, of course, there was the um, acute disappointment uh, in 2010. So I think people will be able to relate to this whole spectrum of emotions. Uh, and also, I hope, find of interest, period, in Australian um, political uh, and um, our social life, where we've developed the, I think, the, the interesting, challenging modernity uh, that we have. So um, I, I would say this is for uh, the general reader and it's a, a story that a lot of people can relate to. Yeah, we really applaud you for, your, um, for the way that you've approached this book. Um, and what are you thinking about doing next? Are you still continuing down this line of writing? Well, I'm, I've got a project in mind around education, actually. Um, I've got a chapter in the book about uh, the early childhood policies that I worked on in government. And uh, I'm particularly interested in looking at um, how we lift academic achievement in some of our poorer schools, and the, you know, the schools we call the low SES schools, and a huge amount of investment and um, different approaches are going into uh, these schools and some terrific stories are out there. So I thought I'd pick a, you know, maybe a half a dozen case studies or something like that and put them together. It won't, won't be as, you know, it won't be 250 pages, it'll be somewhat <laughs> slimmer, but I think that's important work. And it's just, uh, I like, I like um, telling stories and, uh, and finding, finding a way to uh, um, engage readers around issues of public importance. It is important. And on a lighter note, what do you prefer to read yourself? Just about everything. I mean, I, like, <laughs> um, I, I do like reading um, a lot of, lot of history, um, political memoirs. Um, in recent times, I've actually, I think one of the best, not that I, I was ever a great fan of his, but I think Tony Blair's political memoir oh, yes. is, is almost a model, actually. It's a, it's a fascinating book and a, and a real page turner and a blockbuster of a book. <laughs> Uh, so I've enjoyed that, but I, I love uh, imaginative literature as well, so I'm, uh, I can't wait to get into the uh, second volume of Hilary Mantel. I read Wolf Hall, so I'm going to get into um, bringing up the bodies, <laughs> and uh, I've got Barbara Kinsolver on the go at the moment, uh, but I like a lot of Australian literature as well, so I have, I have broad uh, reading interests. Well, thank you very much, Maxine, for being here today. Again, here is another look at the book, Tales from the Political Trenches, and we wish you all the best. Thank you.